go ahead and talk about the lumbar spine MRI anatomy and kind of what you need to know in order to interpret this set of images. I basically have a sagittal set of images here on the left and an axial set of images on the right, and these are both T2 weighted without fat suppression. As I can see, high signal surrounding the central canal region, and I can see high signal in the fat. So how do I kind of split up all this anatomy? Well, I like to start with the sagittal set of images, and I like to kind of go from front to back. Anteriorly, I have the vertebral column, and by that I basically mean the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs, and you can see how they all line up one on top of another with a gentle curvature, which is called the lumbar lordosis. As I go posterior to that, I basically have the spinal canal region. This contains the spinal cord. The tip of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris, and it usually splits anywhere between the T12 and L1, L2 levels. Here you can see it's splitting up at about the L1, L2 level. Inferior to this level, this is called the cauda equina, which is just the individual nerve roots running through the CSF. And I can see the CSF surrounding these structures, and this is all enclosed in a dural sac. Posterior to that, I have the spinous processes, and these are basically part of the posterior elements, which I can see on either side of the spine, and these basically enclose and protect the spinal canal. So let's go back and talk about the vertebral column again. We basically have these vertebral bodies. You can see there's low signal surrounding the vertebral body, which is the cortex, or the thick bone surrounding the vertebral body, and internally we have high signal due to the fat content and the marrow of that vertebral body. In between each vertebral body, we have these discs. So these discs are more mobile than the vertebral bodies. They basically provide flexibility to the lumbar spine, and they're composed of two distinct components. Essentially, we have a high signal component, which is called the nucleus pulposus, and peripherally, we have a low signal component, which is called the annulus fibrosus. It's basically darker because it has more fibrous tissue that doesn't resonate in the MRI machine. As we scroll through the sagittal images and come out laterally, you can see how a portion of the vertebral body projects posteriorly, and this is what's called the pedicle of the vertebral body. As this comes out posteriorly, it also goes superiorly and inferiorly and forms facet joints, which basically connect between each vertebral level. So you can see this joint right here, and this is the facet joint, and this basically provides a lot of mobility to the spine basically allows us to have greater dimension in our flexion, extension, rotation, and side-to-side -side motion of the lumbar spine. As I follow this facet joint out posteriorly, I can see that it connects back up in the midline, and that portion is called the lamina, and that comes back to the spinous process, which we already discussed. So let's go back and look at all this anatomy on the axial view to kind of correlate all this anatomy in a different plane. So again, you can see here I'm cutting right through a disc, and I can see that disc here, I can see that it's round, I can see that it has a low signal peripherally due to fibrous tissue, and centrally it has high signal due to higher water content, the nucleus pulposus. Posterior to that, I see this round, bright collection, which is the spinal canal, and this is basically the dural sac, which contains the individual nerve roots. This would be called the cauda equina at this level. If I scroll up, you can see how the spinal cord goes from being a solid mass here and basically turns into individual nerve roots as you come down lower. And this is just a part of the normal anatomy, and this is basically called the conus of the spinal cord going into the cauda equina. Cauda equina is Latin for the horse's tail, and you can kind of see where it gets that name as you can see all these individual small nerve roots floating in the CSF. Okay, so we're back at this intervertebral disc level, and I just want to show the posterior elements again. Basically, you can see the pedicle here, you can see the facet joint here on either side, and you can see how the bone connects here posteriorly through the lamina to form the spinous process. I just want to spend a little bit of time now talking about the central canal or the spinal canal and on the nerve roots. You can see how there are two nerve roots right here, and as I scroll down, they're going to combine and exit this foramen, which is known as the neural foramen. Here they become lower in signal, they obtain a dural covering, and here you can actually see it exiting as it comes out of the spinal canal region It basically goes out to innervate the body. At this level, I can actually use the sagittal plane to further understand this anatomy. You can actually see I've cut right through this region here, and here you can see the 
nerve root here has this low signal structure and is surrounded by basically fat in this neural canal. So you can actually use a sagittal to evaluate all the neural canals kind of quickly, looking at each level, seeing what's going on with the nerves. So before we finish up, I just want to quickly go over the ligamentous structures of the lumbar spine. Basically, on the sagittal plane, anteriorly we have the ALL, or anterior longitudinal ligament. Posteriorly, we have the PLL, posterior longitudinal ligament. Lining all the lamina, we have the ligamentum flavum, which is actually seen very nicely on the axial plane. It's basically this low signal structure which runs right along here. In between all the spinous processes, we have a thick, strong ligament called the interspinous ligament. And finally, connecting all the tips of the spinous processes is a supraspinous ligament. All right, so next I'm going to basically give a search pattern and how I basically go through a typical lumbar spine MRI. Thanks for watching.